everybody, and welcome to the first of a new series, Return of the Archon. It is me, Tom, lowest of men of 6++, and I am here to talk all things Drakari with you. I cannot wait. Um, this has been a wonderful few weeks for me, getting my teeth into the new Sky Splinter Assault Detachment. I've learned an awful lot, and I, what I really want to do with this series is share everything I've learned, all the lessons, all the different matchups. All the experience in winning games with Drakari uh, and a bunch of quite successful event runs um, to start unpacking this. I think this is an army in an interesting spot. I don't think it's top of the game by any stretch, but I think you can do an awful lot of things with it. And I think for a Drakari fan or someone who's really interested in that play style of sort of sneaky, fragile, stabby elves, this is a great time to play the army. So I'm here to kind of convey some of that enthusiasm for you. Drakari are my favorite army. I've played them since 8th edition. And uh, when 10th dropped, I was a little bit disappointed because they were the ones I wanted to focus on at the start of this edition. Um, and the Drakari Index and the overall state of 10th meant that that just really wasn't a viable option um, in competitive gaming or certainly wasn't something I was enjoying. So I decided to bench them. And I'm delighted that Games Workshop has delivered us a new detachment, new way to play, um, and has really revitalized the faction. Um, so this is a four-part series. I'm going to cover today the overall kind of planning, thinking, early stage preparation for playing Drakari competitively again, thinking about list design, concepts, and event practice. Um, and then in subsequent episodes, I'm going to talk about three events that I went to. So Saffron Slam, which I was able to win, uh, the Goonhammer Open, which I came 11th that with a 4-2 run, and then Hearts GT, which I went to this weekend, where I made the final but then came third after a narrow defeat there. So loads of learning, loads of really interesting games, a whole bunch of wins and some very telling defeats as well along the way. And I want to share all of that with you. We're going to get really in-depth into the games, the play style, particularly in the later episodes. Um, and this will be obviously members only for a little while, and then we'll get this out to the wider audience as well. So yeah, let's think about the structure. Let's think about what we're going to be doing today, um, and we'll go forwards. So in terms of the structure, we're going to talk about preparation and concepts first. How do you figure out what an army needs when it gets a new rule set? What are the sort of strengths and how do you build towards them? We'll think a little bit about what Drakari's overall strengths are now, what their weaknesses are. And we'll think a little bit about the list that I came up with and the one I've been running pretty much consistently for the last few weeks. And we'll talk about my early experiences of practice and iteration where there were some defeats, some victories, and a lot of lessons learned as well, give you a taster of my kind of thought process with matchups and games and something that we'll be building on a lot more in parts two, three, and four. So if we think about preparation, concept, and practice, there's a whole bunch of different things that I do now when an army that I like um, is, is is sort of on my radar and I want to start playing it properly and diving back into competitive play with it. And the place I start is conversations with my teammates, particularly um, shout out to Rob Kimpton, who is the other Drakari specialist in 6++. Um, I, he and I had a lot of conversations, a lot of back and forth, bouncing ideas, uh, bouncing lists, bouncing concepts, testing things um, in conversation. Um, and I also obviously reached out and chatted with other Drakari specialists. The UK has a lovely little scene for the Drakari. There's a few really strong players, um, Paulie Wallace, Julio, um, George McCullough. Be a few that immediately come to mind. So there's some strong Drakari players out there. Um, and of course, we also have the Drakari chat in our 6++ Discord, which I always dip into. Um, although, you know, a whole range of different levels and ways of understanding the game in there. But it's interesting to see what other people think, what other ideas are on display. And I think... There were a few sort of problems and challenges that we identified in these early conversations, um, and lists and your play style have to account for that. So the main one with Sky Splinter is working out pain token generation and management. Now, I'm still figuring that out. There's still a whole bunch of ways to manage that. Um, obviously, the Kronos continues to be invaluable, but actually managing and pacing your pain token usage across the game is really important. Um, and that initially made us a little bit concerned about units like Scourge because these really do need pain token generation to be effective. Um, and my initial thinking was actually towards Ravages instead, because they're a little bit more accurate and they don't need as much support. But in the end, we came back to Scourge for a number of reasons that we'll talk about when we get to the list and the concept, um, because actually the some of the other things that they offer are simply too good, and you have to just manage their pain token usage very carefully. Um, getting a balance between melee and shooting was really important. Obviously, Sky Splinter, for a whole bunch of reasons, 
really emphasizes the combat and really amps up our combat but you still need to be able to go toe to toe with the enemy and you have some guns to keep them honest demect them from transports these kinds of things so it was important to make sure lists still had a good balance of shooting and getting that sort of forward push versus backfield shooting balance uh, is is a real a real art and it's still something i'm again i'm working on and figuring out but i think rob and i settled on a couple of lists that really balance these two things effectively Another challenge is scoring versus cutting edge. This is something where different archons divulge and, and differ from one another. So I think units like your utility, your mandrakes, your battle line are all extremely important in the game, but you also need to be able to put your opponent away and do significant damage. The list that I came up with, as, as you will see, probably leans harder towards damage and output than some. Um, and I think that's a balance I'm still relatively happy with, but in the long run, you do need to think about whether we're making sure that Drakari are the, the masters of scoring, as they should be, um, is the most important thing, and the rest can kind of follow along from that, and actually toning down the cutting edge might be the way long-term in the toughest and hardest matchups. Um, and finally, you know, having thought about all of these things, I needed to work out where I was going to get some practice. So for me, I had a casual pickup game at my local club, Sons of War Club in Cambridge, um, which was really instructive and really useful. Uh, and I also entered into a local league at War Games Workshop down the road, um, which was, you know, is a nice chance to get competitive high standard practice games in and really test ideas. And so that was what I used for the first round of that. I put Sky Splinter in, played several games with it and learnt a lot doing that as well. So that's the kind of background work that goes in. And then once you've done that, I think events become a lot more straightforward because you've got the basics down and you're ready to go. So let's talk about Sky Splinter strengths. If you want the basics on what the Sky Splinter detachment does and its impact, then I've already done a couple of videos on our YouTube. So you can go and have a look there. Just put in Sky Splinter Assault 6 plus plus, you should have no problem finding um, my initial take on the detachment. And we also covered it in Cracking the Codex. So all the stratagems, enhancements, these kinds of things are covered there. That's the basics. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth today and think about what this actually means in practice if you're a competitive player. So. Sky Splinter has a lot of strengths. It's a cool detachment. It's a cool army right now. And so here are some of the things it does well. It has very good high quality, low volume shooting. In Dark Lances, Haywire, and Heat Lances, um, the Drakari have some very heavy guns that are excellent for killing hard targets, particularly vehicles and monsters. They're very well equipped to do this. They don't have a lot of shots. So as soon as you start hitting invuns, as soon as you start hitting um, elite infantry, using these kinds of guns to actually fully put units away gets a little bit more difficult um, but it's very very good at going through basic save vehicles very very good at culling monsters that don't have invuns as well so that's where the shooting comes in it also boasts extremely efficient melee trading pieces now with pain token amped up incubi and archons and lilith as a squad with witches you have units that can absolutely blender even the most durable infantry bri bricks and can threaten incredibly durable uh, monsters and vehicles as long as they are getting the full disembark with lance full rerolls to hit and wound in the case of archons or anti-infantry in the case of lilith to really go through enemy units so there are the assets here to destroy most enemy units um, if applied correctly um, sometimes you need to do this in combination so if, if lilith needs to kill a character first so that some incubi can go to work then that's that's a one two that you might want to pull i certainly pulled that in some of the events um, but it's very very good at applying a melee unit at the right moment to destroy enemy units but you just have to time your attacks and avoid things like overwatch as carefully as you possibly can another thing that rob and i identified that the detachment is very good at is is its speed and space control right i think one of the things drakari have to do is push the opponent around control the parts of the board they can go to get in their way block them delay them um, a lot of the time and also screen out a huge chunk of the board you really want with jakari to make it so that the opponent cannot use reserves in an effective way for the first three turns of the game because you simply flood cheap rubbish units into all the valuable points on the board and you can use the beastmaster for this with its scout move and forward speed you can use venoms to just take up space hiding away in corners and you also i really like reavers because they have that 16 inch move they're very cheap so scooting them up a flank at a key moment in the game just to stop the opponent being able to drop down and counter push is really really useful and i think probably good drakari players live and die by their ability to control the space the opponent can use and determine when the enemy is able to get to your sort of important parts of the board 
Another thing we are really good at is secondary scoring. So obviously Mandrakes with their jump up, jump down just helps shore up so many of the cards when you're playing tactical and I always play tactical because it's fun and because Drakari are good at it. Um, but we also have a lot of transport, so there's always something spare that can do a job, do an action, go to the go to a place at the right time. Um, and finally, one of the things I'm finding, especially in the later game, is that Scourge are very good as well. It, you know, using their movement, their ability to jump, shoot, jump. Once you reach a point where you don't need the damage output so much, um, you can throw away the odd Scourge unit and use that tremendous reach with an assault gun, advancing, fire and fading to go and jump into the right places as well. We used to use fire and fade for this in the real space raid attachment, and that was a lot more reliable, but you still have the means of doing this as long as you position position your Scourge carefully and kind of nudge them towards the middle a little bit later in the game, ready to jump and do additional things. Finally, I think the thing that Sky Splinter does best is project threat. You are often committing a bit of a scam with Drakari, right? It's about what could happen, what you could do. And you are trying to spend a good chunk of the game projecting a very serious threat across the entire middle of the board and indeed towards your opponent's deployment and home objective as well. The risk of you getting in somewhere and doing damage is going to make your opponent play differently and they have to respect that threat. If they don't, you simply table them. Um, but also as you gradually run out of assets, that threat diminishes towards the end. So it's very important that you use this threat and this projection of space to your advantage in the early half of the game you're often going to get brutalized. You're going to use, lose a lot of units and shout out to Archon Scari, obviously, with his kind of iconic, everything is going to die. You just have to use it and make sure it dies at the right time in the right places. Um, but projecting threat for a long time, keeping the opponent very honest, keeping them back is essential. Um, and you need to have enough assets to capitalize if they overextend, but also you need to keep things hidden, keep enough very dangerous units hidden away that the opponent doesn't feel they can come out and come forwards because that enables you to control the game and control space and project beyond your own lines a lot better because as we're going to come to in a moment our own ability to take a punch is quite vulnerable so we need to be very careful and try to make sure the opponent doesn't want to close doesn't want to engage with us so let's talk weaknesses. Uh, <laughs> Sky Splinter definitely has weaknesses. There's a reason this isn't at the top of the meta. I'm sure if you follow the game, you'll see this is a detachment that can fall one all over the place, um, has taken out a few GTs, maybe four, I think. Um, and so it's not incapable of winning, but there's a bunch of stuff in the game right now that makes it very difficult. So you're going to be an underdog a lot of the time. I love being an underdog. It's my favorite way to play. Um, you're also going to need to deal with a whole bunch of things that make our basic advantages very vulnerable. So Artillery is the big one. Artillery is really tough for Drakari because if we lose our transports, we lose all the buffs in this detachment. So artillery puts you on a timer. When you're up against artillery, you either need to be standing off it so far that it can't reach you, things like D-cannons, or you're going to need to rush. Uh, if you're up against serious artillery, you need to move forwards and get involved. There's an Eldar game from my early practice games where night spinners meant I had to be very aggressive because if I stayed still and, and stood back, I was simply going to lose. Another big challenge for us is fights first and fights on death. So melee specialist armies like Custodes, Orcs, CSM, these have tools that make our ability to trade very difficult, which again requires a different style of play, and it's one that I'm still figuring out. But there are things you can do to get around fight first in different ways, um, and I will hopefully demonstrate that in some of the later games. There are, there are tools here, but it makes it extremely difficult and not point and click. Holding primary is another one of our big weaknesses we don't have any units really that you can put on a point and know if an enemy elite melee unit connects with it it's going to live they we simply don't have it i think coven are often supposed to provide this role but i don't think they do at the moment i don't think they're durable enough and that's why you're not seeing a lot of coven in Drakari lists hopefully we get a really good coven detachment somewhere down the line that makes us nice and durable again but right now the solutions to holding primary do not lie in stacking a point with a bunch of durable stuff you're going to need to come up with other sneakiness and other tricks in order to do so finally we have a tough time into three inch deep striking hyper mobile shooting armies so things like gray knights or hyper crypt or eldar can make life very difficult and I played against a bunch of these in the recent run, so I will be going into these matchups in more depth. But suffice to say, things that are able to jump in and get angles on you are extremely dangerous, require a very different kind of play, and present a whole set of different challenges. And so you can't simply stand off and expect to win a game in your half of the board because you know these things are going to drop in and do you serious damage. So from early practice and talking and you know useful conversations with my teammate Rob, 
We've kind of identified a few of the ways around these weaknesses. Um, artillery is simply about being very aggressive and pushing and hoping. Sometimes that's going to work, sometimes it's not. Um, battle shock on the incubi gives us a way into things like interrupts, fight first, fight on death. Any of those that depend on stratagems are at risk if they fail battle shock. So picking one or two fights and being alive to battle shock failure helps you to navigate some of those challenges a little bit. Um, but there are other things too, which we'll get into in more detail in subsequent episodes. Space control is absolutely massive, and this is where the projection and the reach I've already talked about is so important. What you're going to see in a lot of the game run-throughs that I do in the later episodes is that actually a lot of the time the game is about dying slightly ahead of the objectives, pushing into the opponent's half very assertively with cheap disposable units, getting in their way, tying them up, making it so that the early stages of the game, the opponent is actually just clearing through to get to the parts of the board that your primary scoring is being held in. If you can make the battle happen somewhere else, away from your primary, that gives you your best hope of scoring it. Likewise, if you can project serious counter-threat and counter-punch, you can make the opponent really reluctant to push out and come to those places until later in the game, which buys you time, buys you points, and gives you a foothold in the game. Um, other things like sticky objectives, the old Russian doll, stuff falling out of transports onto points, all helps you to score primary where your opponent wasn't necessarily expecting it. And it's all about positioning to give your opponent really difficult choices, force them to choose between simply not killing a transport or risking huge amounts of OC falling onto a point, all those classic tricksy shenanigans. Um, and in general, this is about fighting dirty, right? We don't win straight up shooting matches against shooting armies. We don't win straight up melee combats against melee armies. We are a sort of, I guess, a mid-range fighting and a mid-range combat army. And so whenever we hit armies that are specialized at one of these things, we need to fight dirty and utilize the other things we have, the other tools we have to outmaneuver and stab shooting armies or outmaneuver and shoot and whittle down combat armies use our mobility to get around and into the weak spots, hit our opponents where they're weakest, and try to herd them away from where we're weakest. And all of this in practice is amazing fun, takes a lot of brain power. I've found these games a lot harder and take a lot longer than games I've been playing with things like Votan, for example. Um, but it's very, very rewarding when the plan comes together and you're able to really control and boss an opponent's efforts to engage with you. And you typically find, and I've found in a lot of my games, that you're almost completely tabled at the end, but you have died in all the right places, dominated the primary, strangled your opponent's scoring, ticked off all of yours, and left them 20 points down, even though they've got much more of their army left at the end. And that was the typical kind of path to victory in a lot of the hardest games i found. So there's things you can do. All of these things take practice, and in the later episodes, I will be endeavoring to unpack and spell out and demonstrate how these things work in a little bit more detail. So what was the list that Rob and I settled on? Well, we disagreed a little bit because I like melee and I like damage. And Rob, I think, always leans a little bit more towards his utility and his shooting. Um, but the core of our list was very similar. And this is the knifey spoony special that I settled on, which um, was at the heart of my recent run of events. So this list takes Lilith, three Archons, one with the Nightmare Shroud for no Overwatch, one with Spiteful Raider for additional pain tokens, and the Beastmaster, who is integral with his pushing up with Scout move to go and get in the enemy's face. It takes 10 Witches and 10 Cabalites. The Cabalites are split across Venoms. Um, you have two Fives and a 10 of Incubi to provide some very serious melee threat with the Archons leading them. Two Fives of Mandrakes, three Reavers for cheap utility and movement, two squads of Dark Lance Scourge, and five Haywire Scourge. So that gives you two very versatile, heavy gun platform Scourge squads, and one that is extremely good into very high toughness vehicles to put some dev wounds on, and in a pinch can throw three or six dev wounds on another target if called upon. And they do this for me a lot. They're jammy little guys, and if those dev wounds spike, they can swing entire games, which I love about them. That's Rob's innovation, so shout out to Rob for persuading me over time that I had to take the Haywire. Scourge, uh, and he was completely right. Then settled on a Kronos. The Kronos gives you CP, uh, sorry, pain token regen, which I think is extremely useful. I think how you choose to get your extra pain tokens in this detachment is probably up for grabs. And I think increasingly I want to experiment with using rack squads and their pain token regen when they die. Um, 
because the Kronos is a swingy beast and he doesn't get me pain tokens as often as I'd like. But what he does do is fill up space. It gives you a little bit more OC too. He's durable and he can screen as well. So he's not at all bad and I've really enjoyed him. Finally, we've got a Ravager with Triple Dark Lance. I like this for having an accurate, doesn't need pain tokens shooting platform that can skulk at the back. It's got a good footprint for screening it's relatively durable so it doesn't just immediately fold when it's shot um, and then for the transports i've got two raiders with dark lances and three venoms with the splinter cannons so all of the infantry can then be very mobile i think raiders are a faff to use and two of them means that you can't use the getting back into transport shenanigans quite as much as you might like um, and i do wonder long term whether raiders become venoms and actually that's a way of adding more flexibility and versatility into the list but for now they're in and they haven't let me down yet and the venoms are obviously excellent being able to innately get units out shoot or fight and then get back in the venom is massive helps keep our assets alive forces the enemy to commit and they're very small and they always find nice little hiding places so i love venoms it's just when you hit manticores or anything like that, that suddenly they're a real liability but yeah venoms in general massive massive fan so that's the list and it's been one of those wonderful things where once i got up to speed and had played a few games every event i took this out at i came away very very happy with the balance of tools the assets and the usage and the sense that i just need to keep learning to play it better rather than changing it too much i think there's maybe 100 200 points of flex in there um, and you can ask question marks like does the ravager do its job do you need 20 incubi would 15 do the job can you scale down those kinds of damage bits and add more utility in oc for just playing and hiding and I think those are all very valid questions. Um, but it's it's one where there's not right answers. It's a question of your preference and tailoring, particularly for different matchups as well. So practice and iteration. Um, before I got to any events, I undertook a few practice games. And the first one is the most demonstrative. I got absolutely battered playing against Orcs in a club game. I think losing your first game uh, with a new list or a new concept is very healthy because you learn an awful lot and i learned a lot of hard lessons i didn't manage my pain tokens well i didn't spread my for i spread my forces too thin i didn't focus a flank and push through on one side i took the orcs on on several places and got rolled i also picked too many fights and got undone by things like fight on death um, which caused me massive headaches and i just ran out of puff a little bit too early because the transports in particular got damaged um, and got destroyed and then i lost too much of my mobility to exploit the late game and ran out of puff so that game was massively demonstrative it focused me up reminded me how playing elves works and how using your fragile assets works and i came away from it with a whole bunch of ideas about getting the most out of the detachment i then also entered into the league games at war games workshop and i won against eldari in my first game and then won against orcs redeeming myself in the second game so a lot of the lessons um, that we've talked about were applied in those games i don't want to go into them too much um, because i'm saving that for the kind of later episodes but with eldar because they're a very powerful control army with good artillery you simply have to be hyper aggressive die in the right parts of the board strangle their scoring trim off their assets and force them to spend the entire game defending themselves um, and unable to push out and project onto your half of the board. With Orcs, it's something of a reverse where you let them do that whilst shooting them down because you have much better guns than they do um, and you demech and push back their first wave and then play for the later game. Um, and I found things like Lilith with her fight first was incredible for controlling um, hidden objectives in this game, making it very difficult for the Orcs to engage with her and protecting my primary. As well as these early games, I had a whole bunch of ongoing conversations with teammates, other specialists. There are a few other people out there playing events, and I was learning a lot already from people like Paulie and Rob about what our sort of better and worse matchups was, and watching them play, in the case of Rob, watching him play TTS games with our friends, and getting a lot of data on how the army works and what its kind of weaknesses and strengths are, which I've kind of packaged into this episode already for you. And I think we came away very aware of the centrality of pain token management, good pain token management to using this army correctly. The importance of focusing and breaking through on one side, at least in the game, because so much of the tactical scoring relies on you getting up the board and into your opponent's half at some stage in the game. And finally, protecting a whole bunch of your transports so that you still have access to lance, ignore cover, and extra speed in the later stages of the game, not simply rushing and getting demect en masse. It's vital you still have a couple of raiders and a couple of venoms for the late game so try to protect them as well as you can there obviously are other tricks and tools and i'm excited in episodes two three and four to get into these in a little bit more depth and some of the sneaky ploys we've been pulling on our opponents with the Chikari. there's a lot you can do 
Uh, but I think that gives us a good coverage for this first episode and sort of the general sort of setup and early exploration of the concept. Um, a list that I've arrived at that I'm very happy with and uh, uh, getting ready then to take out to several events. I had Saffron lined up, I had Heart GT lined up and I had Goonhammer Open lined up. Um, and the list in the end has, has performed extremely well across those. So I'm excited to come back in later episodes with a proper in-depth event reports that go in-depth into the matchups, look at the strategies, look at the learnings on particular missions, all the ups and downs and the key takeaways in my continued Drakari adventure. So that is it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. It's amazing to be back on the Drakari and making Drakari content for you all. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, part two will be coming soon, and I'll be looking at my GT win at Saffron Slam in some depth. Um, please do check out the other Drakari content that we have on Six Plus Plus YouTube, and indeed a whole bunch of other stuff. Match Up Plus Plus. We have our main Tuesday show going live at eight thirty on UK times. You can also become a Six Plus Plus YouTube member for early access to these videos. Um, please do support us if you can. It means the absolute world to us. And do join our Discord. Our Discord is completely free. Six Plus Plus Gaming Discord. Um, we've got a bunch of faction chats in there, so you can find me chatting Drakari down there as well. Finally, if you are an aspiring Jakari player and you'd like sort of mentoring or coaching in how to play Jakari, you can take up those options via our YouTube membership as well. And you can get in touch with myself or my captain, Chris, um, and we can work out how to assist you on that score as well. Thanks so much, guys. Um, get out there and enjoy playing Sky Splinter. It's a hell of a detachment and I'm having a great time with it. And I will see you all again for part two very soon. Bye bye.